We're recording. We're back. Hi. After a brief hiatus. Sorry. I'm Ugh. back for good now. I'm done going to Thailand. Congratulations, over over. <laughs> Never say never. I, I know. I know. I shouldn't jinx it, but I think. I wonder if I'll ever go back recreationally. I That's think, a good question. I think I've done enough. I feel like you're like so poisoned on Thailand that you probably couldn't well, enjoy yourself too much. Well, Bangkok. Bangkok's very different, I think, from other oh, parts of the Thailand. The sex resorts? Well, I'm ba- I bet the beaches are nice and stuff. I'm sure I would have, if I got to travel a little more, I think I'd probably have a more positive impression. But yeah, that's true. Bangkok's like a toxic wasteland. Like favela, yeah. Mm. I mean, I hate to say it, but there are nice, uh, clear blue beaches in a lot of places. <laughs> like Greece <laughs> and the Caribbean. Uh, yeah, Southeast Asia is not safe for, for whites yeah. to spend too much time in, definitely. Yeah. I, I'm definitely a different person. Than I was. You're a more Asian uh, person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more Asian. She's transracial. Something's, you know, I lost something in Bangkok. I'm not going to lie. Your dignity, your wallet. My mind. Your mind. <laughs> my, my wallet, yeah. definitely. <laughs> um, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll regain it. Maybe I just need to spend some uh, extended period of time in New York. So wait, were you, mm-hmm. were you in Thailand on Thanksgiving Mm. you're no no right no. i can't i i wanted to do the thanksgiving banter no, I but it's so here. much later that it doesn't matter anymore yeah There's i was we here for say. thanksgiving okay i went to a um, like a dinner party at a friend's house oh that's cute yeah you went to boston or whatever? I went to boston it was nice i my only comment about that is i don't know why people are so mean about boston i'll never understand it they have a sweet green a whole foods and equinox <laughs> what more do you people An want equinox yeah they have a I didn't know that. Straight up equinox up in there. Great. I'll see you soon. It's just full of Bostonians. But listen, if you go to Boston, if you're like a Mm. five or a six in New York, you're a straight up 10 in Boston. Damn. Ladies, I would think about, and there's a lot of men. It's not like Stephen Philip Horace. Stephen Philip Horace likes to talk about how um, all the men in Boston are five, seven. (laughs) They are, but that's never been a problem for me. You don't mind that. Yeah. I just think, I mean, I've been to Boston briefly. I guess when I've had bo- Massachusetts boyfriends, um, it's just boring. Yeah. Know? But like all of America is boring. Yeah. That's not like New York and possibly LA. Cause their big industry is like medic medical school or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of like aspirational model minorities in Boston too. A lot of Irish and a lot of Irish. Yeah. You know, the American Irish are kind of a problem. Yeah, they are. They are <laughs> the, the, um, the Irish are like, um, a downwardly competitive race of <laughs> They're people. racing to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, like most people are upwardly competitive. Uh, Irish people have that thing, which is something that Eli pointed out to me, and he's absolutely right. They have this thing where they like, um, you know, if one of them in their group of friends becomes successful, mm. the other ones are kind of all like churlish and gripey about it. They don't <laughs> like it. And they, and they bring him, they put him back in his place. <laughs> Good for that. Yeah. <laughs> they are they are the irish th- they're almost like jews they're hilariously funny and they're good with money you know all those accountants are irish they sh- are accountants irish yeah yeah charming accents yeah i'm a sucker for really. yeah i like the irish and i don't i can't say i like love I like the proper irish but the irish americans i've been yeah, burned before but everybody is corrupted by living in america sure it's really a bad place to be um <laughs> I uh, yeah it, I I it's I'm this isn't like my love letter to Boston it's like by no means my favorite city in the whole world but it it's a perfectly fine city is what I'm saying having come mind. from New Jersey right yeah I'm I'm up I'm up for a trip yeah. <laughs> um a lot of graves in Massachusetts yeah there are yeah I yeah I want to go up to Boston to do like a a live show that 14 people will come to and get like some clam chowder thrown at us instead of a milkshake or whatever (laughs) they have up there Philly wasn't a slam dunk for us but maybe Boston Philly's nice too it's another city that could arguably qualify as like a little boring and dead or whatever but it's nice I'd like to do a tour yeah you know I'd like to hit the road in 2020 yeah well you know people have been asking about that London tour and that Berlin tour it's a one-stop tour (laughs) Boston London (laughs) Berlin Berlin. (laughs) 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 live from Bergheim (laughs) the Red Scare podcast 
live yeah. from the anal fisting room. We uh, need to really get on it while people still feel goodwill towards us. Yeah, I know. It's like <laughs> s- slowly eroding. Um, um, I got a DM from someone I barely know um, begging me to distance myself from you. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> wait you, somebody you don't know or you know someone i like vaguely am acquainted with oh who i'm not going to what did i do out. you said something uh racist oh, oh god dasha i know every time this is like <laughs> every time you go to thailand i, I get in trouble <laughs> i know and then people write to me saying this is i didn't say anything racist i won't even you I've, didn't say anything. i racist. literally said that beautiful women don't need stupid cocker hand spaniel hair which is not a race thing it's not That's racist a, i just used it what more do you want i was inclusive and used an image of a black woman you as an example you know. i was just lazy and sitting in front of the tv and literally watching real housewives of atlanta and cynthia is one of my favorite characters on mm-hmm. that show because she's gorgeous yeah she could um cut ham with those cheekbones I don't know <laughs> what the expression is with that bone structure <laughs> she's stunning and she's like a beautiful yeah. lady but she has the most like speaking of boston she has the most like provincial nordstrom rack style yeah like she wears a lot of like bedazzled things and like prints. and that's not a race it's not a race that's not thing. a race thing that's a very like generic beauty standard those like ombre yeah cocker spaniel curls that you're talking yeah about. and i wasn't even striking out against like long hair per se which is fine and which most women have it's just that haircut that's so because it's fake but it's also expensive it's like all mm-hmm. the housewives have it yeah and it looks, it makes you look like a white news anchor or country singer. Right. It's just a bad look for everyone. Hey, I'm with you. I yeah, didn't name one woman who looks good with that haircut. You, you know, you can't. Casey Musgrave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tammy Lauren. Wait, who? Who? What's her Tammy name? Blah, blah. <laughs> Whatever their names are. Um, if anything, I was saying like a woman like that does not need to subscribe to uh, Western your beauty standards. People were saying like oh european beauty standards this it's not european it, it's, it's american beauty standards yeah it's like debased bastardized american beauty standards right. women in europe don't have that hair they have like tussled french girl hair right or if they do they're taking a page out of the american playbook yeah they're part of some sort of nationalist party in, <laughs> in france or germany <laughs> So um, so I brought you here today to tell you that I can't be your friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the, we're like it's, um, been a, it's been a good ride, but <laughs> someone I barely know has strongly suggested I um Distance. turn my back on you. <laughs> she flew to New York like Prince Andrew <laughs> to come to my apartment and tell me <laughs> the podcast is over, folks. Sorry. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry I brought any heat up upon you. No, I don't care. I'm like uh, I got bigger problems. I'm sorry man. I brought the heat. <laughs> you're like christopher just a liability to, yeah. <laughs> to the empire of <laughs> um, well whatever yeah it's fine our podcasting empire yeah turns on <laughs> um nobody stopped me anyway speaking of racism kamala kamala is out. out yeah um people attributing it to tulsi okay well yeah she took a big hit you know because tulsi wasn't who, who called her out on her um a fraudulent in, yeah corporatist and carceral Incarc- bullshit carceral bullshit exactly um um but it was just time to i thought she would have stuck it out longer me too i, I really surprised. thought this next sh- buddha judge is gonna drop out next. yeah but chug mm-hmm. i'm surprised a lot of like liberals were whining about the fact that racism and sexism played a role in kamala's defeat come on which i was just like look at the polling numbers they're pathetic yeah look at the stats they speak um, for themselves and there was that thing you know i hate to say it but virgil made some good points about it because they were <laughs> people were like uh, uh complaining about how this was like a racist campaign against kamala and he was like well obama won the iowa caucuses am i saying that right like it people don't like her not because she's black or a woman they don't like her because she's a bad candidate right obama like swept that shit no she was poised to yeah to be a to be a good leader (laughs) yeah she's like hillary (laughs) to be a contender she was set up to be attractive compelling charismatic yeah a woman black she hit all the like the boxes and she was a flunky and a loser and couldn't leverage it right because uh, her record speaks for herself. I know. She's not, yeah. 
Black you, people didn't like her either. She's a cop. Yeah, the only people that I have seen that are fans of Kamala are white pink pussy hat feminists. Right. I've never met a black person, uh, a black person, period. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met a black person who's into Kamala. No. Uh-uh. I've met some black dudes who would fuck Kamala, but <laughs> wouldn't we all? Cool. A gorgeous woman, as we've said yeah, many yeah. times. Um, um, nice hair. Nice hair, yeah. Not doing the, the Real Housewives thing. No. <laughs> um, oh, so God. It's somebody, somebody on the sub did say that, like, when all this drama popped off, I should have just hit back with um, reaction gifts. Yeah, <laughs> right. <You> can- <laughs> Those really speak for themselves. Um. Anyway, but that that God. Sorry. Yeah, what? you need to stop. Stop getting in trouble. It's Anna. not my fault. I swear to God, I <laughs> I didn't know that I said anything racist. I did a racism by calling a woman beautiful and saying she shouldn't <laughs> adhere to stupid American beauty standards. Yeah. Well, you're not you supposed to comment. You did a racism. Oh. <laughs> um. Kamala uh, hired her sister to run her campaign. Oh, I didn't Maya. Know that. I didn't know that. I, I immediately Googled her to see if she was hot or not. Was she? Um, she's about as hot as Kamala. They're like neck and neck. They must have a really poisonous rivalry. Right. Um, she's, but I, my thing is like, people were like, oh, this is like nepotism. I'm not opposed to nepotism. It's like a tried and true form of professional organization. But if you're going to hire your sister to run your campaign, it's because your sister knows you better than anybody else and can run your campaign effectively right so like what's going on with these people <laughs> losers. Mm. so hick and looper who else is out hick and looper's out whoever that is harris mm, no. but is probably next it seems like the heat's mounting yeah from what i've surmised yeah across it's hard to keep up with current events it is when yeah. you're in southeast asia yeah because honestly you're better off i you know and does a lot doesn't seem to really matter yeah we you feel quite nihilistic over there so you don't really care yeah if your partner said something vaguely racist on twitter <laughs> i literally want to be right, right back like i don't care about this yeah <laughs> i don't i don't this isn't i didn't say anything i didn't even really want to dignify with a response but yeah um my impulse would just be like i don't I don't give a shit. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> Have you been to Thailand, man? <laughs> yeah. It's like people get run over on construction sites over there. No one flinches. Mm-hmm. They just like keep working. Yeah. Um, I know I'm like a really an, an annoying like Welbeck fangirl, but there's a, a beautiful scene when he, in Thailand where he's like in p- the protagonist is in Thailand. Shall I read that book and we can talk about it? Oh, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. I think people would like that we can talk about it there's a lot to say about it that's outside of the book but in one of his other books he's like on he's like looking down from his like high-rise hotel and he sees like a Thai construction worker get crushed by like a crane or something and everybody just keeps working and I was like that it's the rest of the world for you yeah man (laughs) I was like um reading the news i.e scrolling twitter and there is some (laughs) some horrible like sound bite thing about a a rape victim who was burned alive in a van as she went to court to face down her attackers in india oh my god I was like, man yeah it's horrifying i was like well and there's your rape culture alive and well not in america mm-hmm. damn yeah the news what are you yeah. <laughs> um it would be really funny if if mayor pete just like thwarted everyone's expectations and won the race like by the land the president <laughs> fake gay president our first yeah <laughs> fraudulently gay gay guy president yeah yeah i've mm. i've had people say to me like what if he's not gay i'd never thought about that because when a person says they're gay or whatever you're inclined to believe them right but like what if he's not he doesn't seem that gay obviously he seems yeah I, well, well all, all politicians seem kind of sexless and yeah you know that's the thing it's like um they're all yeah i don't even want it i i had this thought today where i was like damn i wish i could switch bodies like freaky friday style with a major democratic politician for a day so, so i could understand like inhabit their headspace yeah and understand what compels yeah (laughs) they have to do the podcast (laughs) 
Yeah. And I have to like uh bottom for Chase. <laughs> Jason? No, probably Pizza Top. Um Pete's neither. He's yeah. They just like dock. Um but but I was thinking like because I want to understand what compels somebody to like uh focus on like a fake Russia Gate style impeachment investigation over trying to marshal like pool your resources and run a compelling candidate against the guy you claim to hate and want to impeach right you want to know what it's like to be addicted to losing yeah i was like what and then i was like wait but then i would have to like be there and witness them like see what they masturbate to which i would you know like they go, go through their web history is that yeah what like they probably know about incognito browsing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would be in their body. Right, so I would right, right, be right. masturbating <laughs> as like Pete Buttigieg or like fucking Amy Klobuchar. That's the one I don't want to know. Like they have like a hooker plastered up in the dry Clobes, yeah. 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 I don't want to know. I don't want access to that, that kind of knowledge. It's crazy that Clo- is Klobes is still in the race, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Kamala and Gillibrand dropped out before Klobes right at least they're hotter i mean she's i've been saying this from the get-go i'm like delusional the most delusional one i guess well why 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 Why? who benefits from from them continuing continuing this charade dasha if it was down to clobes or or buddha judge who would you go with oh my god (laughs) uh donald trump (laughs) i guess no i'd have to um I'd have to take a long, hard look at, you know, their actual policies. Klobuchar and Buttigieg. I guess Buttigieg, because he's a man, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take a gay woman, a gay man over a woman in office. Over anytime. an ugly chick. Yeah. Um, mm. I, it's also funny because Buttigieg was, like, under fire for this McKinsey shit, because it turned out that he was a contractor for management consulting mm-hmm. for a McKinsey from, like, 2009 to, whatever, 2016 or something. And now people yeah, are claiming that he's probably a cia Man- agent management consulting. yeah management consulting mind reels <laughs> yeah it's like so what do you guys do again Everything's so you, fake you manage you consult to managers to, <laughs> it's like i mean i tweeted this it's the biggest grift ever it combines yeah. the two biggest corporate rackets which are management and consulting right they, bigger grips than podcasting yeah they no seriously at least we're producing something it's questionable whether what we're producing is of value yeah but we are independent producers of our own. I want to become a podcast consultant yeah, when this goes imagine. south. <laughs> That's Hot really take consultant. Grip. We will teach you how to manage your <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, this is a Zoom recorder. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure the levels are a little off every time. Keep people on their toes. <laughs> yeah, like it's processing. <laughs> um, but management is basically like the 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 art the business of like reducing the strength of labor because yeah. it's like overseeing labor and like manufacturing the illusion of productivity through like the endless administration of existing resources they're not creating anything new and then consulting is sort of like doing that but with external contractors what consulting is just like say like saying stuff right yeah they i mean they go into um you know corporations and countries and they tell people how to maximize their profit <clears throat> as i understand it mayor pete was in iraq at some point well he was a soldier and no at, in in the in, capacity oh, of a management consultant okay and i'm sure what he was doing and i'm sure people have said this is probably helping privatize iraqi businesses mm-hmm. for and hand them over to like various oligarchs drop out pete <laughs> but like and then he's, he's like oh i can't disclose what i was doing because i signed an nda <laughs> smart but <laughs> um how many ndas i violated <laughs> <laughs> yeah like oh uh, god sue me people Don't should sign ndas me. when they have sex instead of consent forms. celebs make them people sign ndas really apparently jake gyllenhaal i'm sure leonardo he's DiCaprio gay. has a He's yeah, that's what the NDA is for. <laughs> um, yeah, I think if you fuck like DiCaprio, you co- you go in a hotel and there's just a stack of 
paperwork you fill out and yeah. then he, he does it doggy with his, <laughs> his airpods in and then you leave you can't talk about yeah, it yeah like patrick bateman like kissing his bicep <laughs> mm. but it's crazy people were so upset when trump got elected and they were like he he wants to run the government like a business and it's like this dude wants to run the government like a management consulting firm Ooh, yeah not even like a real estate mogul like a glitzy businessman no it's crazy like he was talking about there's like a, a quote about um from him from like 2014 or something where he talks about being the mayor of south bend and how he wants how it's a beta city like not in the sexual sense in the testing sense oh. like it's a untested unreleased product oh and he's talking about it in terms of like shareholders or like stakeholders yeah. and upping productivity and it's like this is a city of human beings He's not a, a startup yeah it's scary like this Beta is what we have city. to look forward to it certainly seems that way yeah um you think hell dog is gonna throw her hat in the ring i don't know Ugh. i was complaining to you or she went on stern yeah. yesterday and they were mocking bernie shame on you shame shame on you howard i like howard stern i i understand he's like a zionist and a liberal but as as a comedian he's reasonably funny yeah i mean sure he walked so we could run yeah. <laughs> in a way um have you seen that guy around the lower east side who looks like howard stern and goes oh my to God, parties yes. and like doesn't say he's howard stern but doesn't say he's not howard stern yeah and i'm sure like probably fox chicks who are drunk enough to like think he's howard stern i've taken pics with him before <laughs> yeah i i think i've seen a pic of you with with his like oily curls touching my face <laughs> yeah and it's like uncanny valley because there's something not like i'm like i tell up close that it's not him yeah but you see him around and you're like holy shit is howard stern here you know it's just that guy it's that, that guy pretends to be howard stern That's i'm gonna crazy. go on his radio yeah. show <laughs> We should invite him on the pod. <laughs> yeah. Like, so are you like a professional Howard Stern impersonator or do you just do this for fun? I think or? he just does it for fun. I think he just milks like, he doesn't say like, hi, I'm Howard Stern. Yeah. But he doesn't say like, he by the way, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> like Ariana Grande. He doesn't say he's Puerto Rican, but he doesn't not say it. <laughs> um, he's not not Puerto Rican. I've... So, I really want to get to the bottom of this. Maybe somebody for like at the outline or something, one of those like funny investigative media can, can investigate him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh shit, I just ashed in the SD thing. Oh God, we <laughs> keep doing that. I, I did that as I put my cigarette out on a Oops. SD card. Probably. <laughs> no Podcasting consulting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're good, baby. Um, yeah. So yeah, basically I'll just continue ashing in here or whatever. Oh no. Um, but basically Mm. hillary went on stern and then she and he hurt me yeah she said what she did she said say bernie sanders hurt her because he took too long to endorse her okay. and that's what she attributes her loss to she'll attribute her loss in 2016 to anything to but anything. herself like it was those red scare girls she says um did she he asked if she hated sanders for his long primary campaign and then the slowness with which he offered his eventual endorsement. Clinton said, I don't hate anybody. Um, and then she said, he hurt me. There's no doubt about it. Mm -mm. And she did said it did lasting damage to her chances in the general election. Lie, liar. liar. That's liar. funny because as I recall and correct me if I'm wrong, cause I'm stupid and don't understand politics, but, uh, he was basically derailed from the nomination by Clinton and her cohort. And then he yeah. endorsed her the nonetheless. DNC and campaigned. completely fucked him over in the primary. Yeah. So then he endorsed her anyway. And campaigned on her behalf. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because he's a stand up guy. God. Yeah. Fuck her. God. She's such a worm. It's she wrote crazy. a whole book about losing. She's such a worm. So, he he really I, w I really I hope she runs again you know what I hope she fucking does get back in there hell dog that just might, chilling and that <laughs> might be that might be like the the funniest thing that could happen to us um I first I feel like tragedy, Howard then as far as what's up first is tragedy then as far as yeah yeah no that would be <laughs> let's really let's do it again yeah. <laughs> um 
I think Howard should have just like rated her. I said on Twitter that he should have rated her on a one to 10 scale, but I take that back. He should have rated her on the Patrice O'Neill scale. The zero, the binary. No, the one that's like zero to 32 oh. or whatever. The, sl- the, the really advanced <laughs> one. Um, I think she, he should have had her sit on a Sibian, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, but he asked her Yeehaw. the lesbian stuff, right? Yeah, which she deflected. I didn't watch the segment. I haven't had time. Yeah, we're really busy. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> I've, you know, I'm jet lagged. Yeah, we had this recording planned before all this Hillary. Howard How long can I milk jet lag for my latent mental illness? For as long as you've been traveling, but you can add the days that you were back and just, you know. It's been a, it's been a rough ride. Yeah, you're like eternally jet lagged now. Yeah, my my yeah, my brain's broken. So I didn't watch the certain the certain interview, but I hate, I really Hillary Clinton really. Well, yeah, and gets it's my obvious. Day off on the, on when the I was in L. A. last time, I was listening to Stern, and he was doing like he had somebody do an impression of Bernie, and it was like kind of ridiculous and bad, and didn't land. Mm. But I think I think if I were to psychoanalyze it, I think Stern hates Bernie for Freudian reasons because he reminds him of himself. But he, unlike Stern, he has convictions. Like, he's also, like, a goofy, bespectacled, unassuming Jewish guy. Right. And Howard Stern has spent his whole life being funny and honing his personality in service of scoring chicks, which he's done well, I'm sure. Definitely. But Bernie doesn't even need that. He has ladies lining up. Like, all of us think Bernie's a one on the binary. Of course. Daddy. (laughs) And why is that? It's not because he's so, like, (coughs) hot and charming. It's because he has convictions. Yeah. Because he stands for something and believes in something. He's not a fucking coward. Yeah. I hate cowards. <laughs> yeah. And like all these guys are like rich boomers and they resent Bernie for that reason. I think with Howard Stern, there's probably like an added layer of like. Well, there's material interest there as well. That yeah, of course. Bernie would compromise. Yeah. Um, But Howard hasn't endorsed a candidate. It would be funny if he endorsed Klobuchar. Yeah. <laughs> He'll endorse any female candidate who gets on a Sibian. Yeah. And so so would I, honestly. Yeah. That's something I'd like to see. No, that's, that's <clears throat> the in- injection of sex positivity that the Democratic Party needs. <laughs> Just like Pamela Anderson with her heart implants riding a Sibian. She should run. She should run. She would win. Yeah. Trump would acquiesce. Yeah, he would melt. <laughs> Pam was on stage. Oh my God, are you kidding? And like a slip dress know what to do. and blue sight heels. He wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. Is Marianne still running? Um, That's a good question. Vaguely. I don't think I get so. texts all the time from her campaign. Oh, I really? Oh, so she's still running. She has like a sexy new lob haircut. Mm. A I long think, bob? Yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah, I think like... Oh my God, imagine like a Pamela Anderson, Joe Rogan ticket. That would sweep the nation. They're both too smart to run for president. Pamela also yeah. can't run because she's technically Canadian. Oh, fuck. Right. But uh, Rogan could. Rogan could. But he's he's got a good thing going with, with yeah. the pod. I was in an Uber that was listening to Joe Rogan the other day. It was nice. I yeah. was like, this is, this is good. <laughs> this is great entertainment. He was talking about Adderall. The second I got in the car, it was like Joe Rogan being like, what do you need to take Adderall for? He was like, why don't you just drink some juice? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah! I was like, I have work to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, juice isn't going to cut it, Rogue. He's like, why don't you drink my C450 gorilla protein shake? Why don't you go in a uh, sensory isolation <laughs> chamber like I do? <laughs> He goes in a sensory isolation chamber with a uh, tape recorder that's voice activated. So if he has any ideas, Wait, he can really? just speak them into... Um... Wait, is that fact? Yeah, yeah. He was talking oh, about it with Penn okay. Gillette. <laughs> okay. Oh, was that the guest? Yeah. That's hilarious. He's like, um, enter promo code Morning Joe. Oh, wait, that's a different <laughs> Joe. I'm really stupid today. Oh, the Peloton ad. Mm. Oh, yeah. We should talk about well, that. Well, I guess that was my... I was thinking about buying a sensory deprivation. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically my apartment's mostly windowless, so it's all kind of one big yeah. sensory deprivation. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn all the lights out and it's like Chinese water torture. See if I get any good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> um Right. So there was a viral Peloton ad. Yeah. 
Peloton. 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 <laughs> um, where a man, it was like a Christmas commercial where a guy gets, a husband gets his wife a Peloton bike. Yeah. And then it weirdly switches to like kind of a f- selfie camera, first person like video of yeah. her like tracking her journey with the Peloton and yeah. how much she enjoys it. Yeah. But uh, the actress in it seems very distressed. <laughs> Yeah, it, and I happy. literally, when I looked at those, I was like, this looks like those images of that woman, what's her name, Regina K. Walters at the truck stop killer took, that girl who kind of has my haircut and is wearing my outfit. <laughs> and she's like, no, it like literally looks like, it's like, looks like what your expression would be if you confronted your would-be rapist in a parking garage. Yeah, you're like grimacing and yeah. smiling yeah. a little. <laughs> like reaching for the pepper spray and it's not there. As you're mounting the Peloton bike. True story, when I was 14, my mom got me a rape whistle for Christmas. Oh, that's Little sweet. did she know I wouldn't be needing it. <laughs> Woo! Um, Woo! But it's, yeah, the commercial like documents this woman's year-long fitness journey after her husband gifts her one of these expensive stationary bikes. Right. It ends, yeah, with them then watching this documentary she made about That's creepy, riding yeah. a bike. A lot of people were mad about the classist and sexist overtones of this uh, thing because at the end she thanks her husband. And yeah. she says, a year ago, I didn't realize how much this would change me. Thank you. Um, right. I was kind of mad because she didn't change at all. She was like pretty and skinny before she got the bike and she pretty and skinny it, after. She kept it tight. Yeah. Though. Um, but I'm sure mentally she was feeling pretty good. Well, yeah, people immediately were like, oh my God, what kind of husband would get his wife of exercise equipment to keep her skinny? <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, the, it's, a rich one, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> a guy who can afford a $2,500 bike is that how much this thing costs yeah 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 because it's the you've got you get the bike and then you have to get sort of the wi-fi like the screen separately well no they come together okay it's, yeah it's a no it's two thousand two hundred and forty five dollars so you have to get the video streaming equipment and the bike and then 39 dollars well, listen you want to pool our patreon funds and i don't have the space for <laughs> it i don't know where i would put my peloton I, I told Eli I would not be mad if he gifted me and my two female roommates a Peloton bike. That would not be a deal breaker. I mean, it's it's not quite as nice as some jewelry or like a sex vacation to Thailand, but it's like <laughs> not a bad gift. An Equinox membership will get you so much more. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. to do more free advertising for Equinox. <laughs> but, well, that's the that's really the, the thing that sucks about Peloton, or that is to me is a sign of like uh kind of dystopian times is that the trend of like i mean i guess it's just suburbia i guess that's just what people want yeah is like to do it from the privacy of their homes yeah um but then i read this article in the atlantic i think about sort of the cult of peloton Mm -hmm. and how um the people uh peloton users owners end up kind of like um, and the journalist goes to like a Peloton conference where they meet all these people mm-hmm. and they ended up kind of like forming these like Facebook subgroups of Peloton users like based on their like for like mothers or plus plus size people or whatever um, that it does end up kind of being a way of like people forming communal bonds through this extremely like isolating depressing and alienating yeah. neoliberal technology right. yeah. but what they really still want is like French <laughs> to make friends and like build bridges and like foster a sense of community yeah i mean like <clears throat> to be fair like the the idea that people the moral that people were up in arms about that oh, a woman should stay thin and hot for her husband uh, even after she pops out the kid i think is a virtuous and healthy ideal to subscribe Definitely. to oh for men and women mm-hmm. it doesn't mean the man should slack too the bigger issue is that I think it was like this woman, Sarah Jong, who was like, who's, she's like a New York Times um, tech op-ed writer. She was like, this is basically like a giant surveillance hamster wheel. That's the bigger <laughs> issue. It's like this thing that's like tracking your data. Right. And like wrapping its neolib tentacles around it's your life. Black mirror. Yeah. No, it really is. <laughs> I think there's literally a Black Mirror episode where they make like 
prisoners do exercise bikes. Yeah. Or maybe they're like, not prisoners or that we're all prisoners. I forget what the moral was of that one, but we're all like but yeah, willing prisoners. Yeah. Just huh. go to the gym. Yeah. People that's the thing. It's like people want they don't want like they don't want to go, go to a restaurant anymore. They get their food ordered in. Yeah. They, they don't, don't even want to like, go to Soul Cycle. Yeah. Because it's about Soul Cycle is the original Peloton. Yeah. Which is that like it combined cycling with sort of like life affirmative coaching and like dancing yeah and a built-in friend group yeah or like kind of even with soul cycle it's a little cutthroat yeah um and the atlantic ad also that like <clears throat> the atlantic ad i mean article <laughs> also <laughs> mentions um yeah that peloton um that they prefer peloton to soul cycle because soul cycle has like a body shaming element because they went to a soul cycle class where they said like that's right girls like let's get those arms skinny for tank top season yeah or whatever yes. <laughs> and they were they were shocked that someone would say something like that in a in an exercise class but that's what motivates people yeah body and also shaming. like peloton like having a, a bike in your house just like internalizes the external surveillance voice it's like not really that much different right but the benefit is that like because you know you go to a soul cycle class there's you know however many instructors work at however many soul cycle studios but at peloton because it's video streaming it's like there's like 12 or 20 instructors who are like the creme de la creme so you're always getting like the best cycling instruction mm -hmm. from like the people who are most qualified to do it but i don't know <laughs> i don't want that i don't like cycling anyway yeah cycling sucks i like neurotically got into soul cycle for a while yeah, but it's hard and it's not really fun and it like makes you the wrong <clears throat> kind of skinny. You end up looking like Lance Armstrong. I don't like cardio. Yeah. Anyway, I'm mostly a reform of Pilates girl. Yeah. I like to do small, tiny, masochistic movements <laughs> that crush my body and spirit into a <laughs> smaller, smaller. <laughs> um, but I think it's fine to get your wife a a peloton if you can afford it yeah i mean this the sad thing is that what this is really about like having a peloton ad is like or a peloton bike you're like basically retreating from your work obligations but also your family obligations and becoming like further atomized by <laughs> technology um there was another there there was another people were bemoaning how this ad was like uh scary and dystopian there was another even more scary I and think, they took Peloton a hit ad. they lost money I they think. lost like nine percent in stock or in their stock valuation um, um but there's this other peloton ad that didn't go quite as viral 942 million dollars of its market value in one day after the after the commercial no one likes <laughs> i mean it's a creepy commercial because it's done in this kind of like verite <laughs> selfie style but um, there's another ad where this like kind of fit and handsome Asian dad, mm -hmm. like an Andrew Yang, but hot dad is pedaling on his bike late one Christmas Eve and he's surprised by his toddler son who's clutching a blanket. That's way sadder than the was Peloton. Was that a Peloton ad yeah, as well? Yeah, I think so. It was some sort of stationary bike. Yeah. And like nobody talks about that ad. It's not just like all these feminists want to make it about women. It's like the same feminists that are like, it's creepy when 35 year old men date 23 year old women, like those yeah, chicks. Right. Um, because they're trying to offload their responsibility for being like Undesirable. chubby and miserable <clears throat> onto men. Right. <laughs> um, but it's a really disturbing uh, scene. And I was thinking again, yet again of that John Berger quote where he talks about um, men watch and women watch themselves being mm -hmm. watched. And it's like, the thing is that, this trend now is no longer restricted to women. Now men are watching themselves in the surveilled gaze. Right. It's not like a gender all thing. Andrea Long too. Yeah. <laughs> we all get fucked in the end. Yeah. That's the most By it, a Peloton instructor. Yeah. And it's like the the disturbing thing isn't that the oppressive forces of patriarchy or whatever are inflicting themselves on women yet again. It's that men are now behaving like women, which is disturbing for everyone invo involved like nobody wants that shit right yeah <laughs> anyway i mean yeah i think the 
for the commercial it just comes down to like performance you know i think that it's not physical but like i just think that the actress conveyed a deep sadness that was not intended yeah <laughs> she should have been a little more a little less like flinchy about about the bike yeah a little bit less fine. sad yeah she looked like a sad <clears throat> cat emoji or something and it's like that but i think that that's the true when she's like 6 a.m <laughs> <laughs> time, to find, time to ride the bike <laughs> And the implication is that she's like a working woman who's juggling. Yeah. And that her husband is somehow oppressing her into yeah. staying fit. Ugh. The sadder the sadder thing, if you really think about it, is that this woman is so saddled with work that she can't take care of her son and doesn't find the time to exercise. Right. She should quit her job. <laughs> yeah, she should quit her job and become a podcaster. <laughs> and then on the next episode of Red Scare, we do a stationary bike while we do it. <laughs> We should test the Peloton bike. Okay, mail us one. We gotta yeah. put it in your apartment, though. I don't have the. Yeah, we can put it up in here. My TV barely works. Yeah, I'm. I'm not tech savvy. Low computer literacy, so I don't. I have doubts about setting up the video stream. <laughs> I'm like I gotta get on Wi-Fi for this. <laughs> I'll just go to the gym. Yeah, how does and this see work? my personal trainer who infantilizes me? That's yeah, what I pay that's for. Like, you get to see people i think that that's what it's all about this is a bike that's probably more for suburban people who don't want to get into their car and drive two miles to the gym right. it's not when it's for like, new yorkers yeah who have many equinoxes almost on every block yeah <clears throat> and going to the gym is a lot like going to therapy and that it structures your day-to-day experience oh yeah how's therapy going do you want to fuck your shrink yet no <laughs> not yet no <laughs> not now not never all right never say never you said not never actually that was a freudian slip yeah <laughs> no i was just doing the welcome liam lynch the, not now the, not never oh. <laughs> but it seems like it's going well yeah i the thing you said about being inside a democratic politician was quite inspired it made me think about you know maybe therapy having some positive effects on well it has in the sense that it's emboldened me to like be less socially awkward and like talk to strangers oh cool because i'm like literally going twice a week to to offload my deepest darkest personal traumas and secrets onto a total stranger right so you can talk to someone at- who by the way i have zero sexual attraction to whatsoever <laughs> yeah. yeah keep saying that yeah. keep doubling down on that anna <laughs> no the scary thing is like i look at this guy and i'm like god in another world we could be friends probably yeah, yeah. that's a scary thing not like yeah that's what i you know i'm like you go boy keep flashing that engagement ring <laughs> engagement ring or a wedding band whatever yeah. but he has he's like you he's know like he does that turning thing, like, the photo of his like, wife towards you yeah <laughs> my wife <laughs> very nice there's that bar episode where he goes to the gym i've been subtly smiling this whole time thinking about it actually. <laughs> but that's yeah peloton's a waste of money you can pay a gorgeous black guy to with washboard abs to like a huge dick <laughs> shout out to my personal trainer <laughs> who's like i literally pay him to treat me like a baby to go like you are so strong you're doing so good and i'm yeah. like really brandon I'm like, no he's like yeah you're strong <laughs> like you have the <laughs> ideal body for a woman in 2019 you have the perfect body for a teenage boy (laughs) it's yeah it's much better i think it's much more useful to like go to the gym and have a personal trainer like mold you into Mm -hmm. the person you always wanted to be while avoiding various people that you've seen at china chalet exactly in broad daylight yeah there's way more virtue in that yeah i'm like oh i didn't know you had finger tattoos cool bro and if you're under or unemployed or have a podcasting lifestyle then you can go to the gym in the afternoon when everyone else is at work mm-hmm. and then it's, it's free, it's free empty. rain yeah yeah you can really yeah. let your freak flag fly yeah you can like wax your pussy up in the <laughs> sauna mingle with the other divorcees yeah <clears throat> um should we talk about all the shit happening with happening with, happening with Trump. Uh, with yeah. Trump. What's up with my boy? With my boy Trump. He's um, still in the. Pro- he's still. They're still pretending like they're gonna impeach him. 
Yeah, and they're still on about that. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Uh, the they, best. I mean, the like I said, the best avant-garde art is kind of the unintended comedic slippage of body positive ads like the peloton ad mm-hmm. and then plus whatever trump does on social media right that's <laughs> the art world <laughs> that's the new frontier yeah i'm like you keep taping those bananas to the wall at art basel <laughs> keep making those uh, piles of detritus yeah um yeah so there was a bunch of world leaders mocking trump i don't know you probably know more about this. well biden made a little video about how trump is unfit to be a leader okay where he um uh sort of showed footage of like um trudeau and macron and merkel like wincing and like making fun of trump for not being a good leader and the suggestion is that you know biden would be more qualified and that if Trump wins, we'll have four more years of being a laughing stock on the world stage. But it really just seeing Merkel fucking making fun of Trump just made me want to, you know, I'm like, fuck you, yeah. bitch. <laughs> You're gonna laugh at my president. I know. <laughs> I know. It's like true. It's like the, the blackface guy and the guy who banged his 70 year old teacher are making fun of Trump. <laughs> Where do they get off? And Princess Anne, like who the fuck is who Princess the Anne? Fuck is Princess Do we Anne? need any more royals? No, that's for damn sure. <laughs> laughing at President Trump. Were yeah. they laughing though? What did they well, say? Well, he said something. He was at some conference. He said that like America has done. Oh yeah, fucking Bojo's laughing at him, dude. Oh, Bojo and uh, Corbin had a debate. Or oh really? Too. Yeah. He said. Um, uh, his administ- my administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country and then audience laugh laughs and he handles it well he says wasn't expecting that but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like a little it's a fun little video of his gaps sometimes i go home i just put i type in trump funny onto youtube really? <laughs> <laughs> i put it on mute i listen to oasis and i just let him do his thing but but who I've never corrupt dangerously incompetent sounds like they're talking about us <laughs> i know ill-informed whatever fuck off but with all due respect who is bojo to make fun of trump he owes his entire aesthetic and uh political position to the rise of trump yeah he's like literally poor man's trump he's like fucking gary Busey playing trump with a british accent is he <laughs> kidding himself it's true don't bite the hand that feeds you right i think this idea that trump is the laughing stock of the western world and arguably the world at large is actually mutually beneficial for everybody Hmm. because because they get to feel like they have a moral high ground yeah they get to feel like they're still holding down holding it down for like civilized Mm -hmm. diplomatic polite western civilization and america and trump in particular get to feel like a persecuted Mm -hmm. underdog right everybody wins which motivates us to work even harder. Yeah, nobody wanted to rise to the o- occasion of Obama. <laughs> he was so charismatic and it's so true. slick. Yeah. He made everybody he really feel the wool over our eyes, yeah. too. At least Trump shines a light on what's really going on. Yeah, I don't know. but Everything's completely retarded and broken. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they were making fun of in the video, though. They were like, oh, Trump's uh, campaign manager's mouths were on the floor. Yeah. Dur- ha, ha, ha. I was like, that's he's not so funny. That's dumb. flattering. He's so dumb and he has his gaffes and look at him hugging the flag. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, it's dumb. Not, not purging your youthful indiscretions of blackface from public record. <laughs> Trudeau should have hired like Beyonce's like PR team to yeah. get rid of all those dirty images of him wearing like a turban. Well, did you see the photo of um, Trump and Melania and Ghislaine Maxwell and Prince Andrew at the Pimps and Hoes party? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. It looked like a fun party. Prince Andrew looks quite forlorn and he is, did not get the memo about. I don't think he understood what a Pimps and Hoes party was. No. He's like, I'm already a pimp. <laughs> so I'll just wear my I'm normal clothes. <laughs> He's wearing his traveling clothes. <laughs> yeah, everyone around him is wearing like uh, like latex and like furry hats and like drinking out of goblets. Yeah, like dumb wigs. I think the I think pimps and early odds pimps and hoes aesthetic is going to come back. I think yeah. we'll see. I'll, I think we'll see a full turnaround on that. Probably. 
It's not sexist. Ladies can be pimps too. Yeah. Look at you, Max. Well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gidane. We should do a pimps and hoes theme for New Year's Eve. Oh yeah, that's not a bad idea. Mm, that's all to think about. <laughs> Paul Cooper's kind of a pimp. Paul Cooper's a big time pimp. Yeah. I could see him Benson in like... and hers, yeah. maybe. <laughs> Um, um, but I, everybody was like describing, um, everybody was like up in arms about that. And then the thing happened with, um, Trump, that woman, Pamela Carlin, who was, um, a, a witness, like an expert witness at the first mm. impeachment hearing where she uh, mentioned Barron's name. She had put Barron's name in her mouth and everybody mm-hmm. freaked out mm-hmm. through some shade. At- yeah barren she was she said that um contrary to what president trump says article two of the constitution does not give him the power to do everything he wants and i'll just give you an example that shows you the difference between him and a king which is the constitution says there can be no titles of nobility so while the president can name his son baron he cannot make him a baron just a bad joke i bet you think you're so clever she's so clever you noticed his name was baron it's spelled different bitch yeah (laughs) I think Where's it's a lovely. Are? I think it's a lovely name <laughs> for a beautiful growing boy like Baron Trump. For a seven foot four, <laughs> thick boy. <laughs> wobbling, so thick it's so wobbly. He got it from his daddy. <laughs> Keep Baron Trump's name out of your damn mouth. Yeah, and uh-uh. like Melania was like. It oh, is a shame to no. speak the name of a minor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about my special boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're going to talk about Baron Trump, at least say he's retarded. Yeah. At least speak what we all see. And yeah, say he shoot has, from the hip, bitch. Yeah. Don't make some fucking veiled thing about monarchy. Yeah, That's not the it, problem here. Yeah, it's so stupid. Also, she didn't technically insult Baron Trump, though no. she probably shouldn't have gone for that jugular or whatever. Every time Melania tweets, I like live for the moment because I like read it in my head in her tiny little sexy baby daddy voice. You know? <laughs> it is a shame. To- <laughs> President Trump is moving forward with his plan to repeal food stamps for underprivileged children. <laughs> oh God. which by the way is a thing that happened yeah I that's saw a crazy you, yeah, that yeah. no one's people don't talk about this kind i of was stuff. tweeting about it aaron mate was wrote an article about it and tweeted about it and so something like three million people now face the loss of their food stamp benefits oh, and then sucks. one million something like one million children are uh, facing the loss of their automatic placement in federal school lunch programs which is insane. What the fuck? But nobody talks about this. No, because we're too busy talking about what happened in Ukraine. Yeah, and it's crazy. And nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about the, the foreign policy stuff in Syria. And you get the sense after a while, you know, that, again, this is mutually beneficial because on policy matters, the Democrats and Trump are basically in cahoots. Right. It's just the decorum that they don't like. Yeah. And if they can also leverage they're mocking of trump to their advantage it also suits everybody mm-hmm. but it's a really like it's bad, especially trump huh especially it suits everyone especially trump yeah who's like one in more ways than one and that he has sort of created like the reality tv spectacle of politics which is all that the impeachment proceedings really are yeah like the total it's synthesis like, of art and life like exactly. seriously anyway meanwhile meanwhile what else? I don't know. Do we have anything <laughs> else to say? Has anything? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Paglia penned another. Yeah, Pogs is back. Pogs is back in the Hollywood Reporter doing what she does best. Yeah. Lamenting the loss of former. The sex grandeur of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> of the past. Um, she wrote a thing about the death of the Hollywood sex symbol, which is similar to the thing she wrote about Rihanna. Yeah, yeah. She could have just left it at the death of Hollywood. (laughs) Basically. I'm going to be one of those snide lips. There, I fixed it for you. There, I'm (laughs) memory. But she talks about how there aren't any more like female. I mean, there's not male sex symbols either, but that the the death of the female sex symbol in film and TV is really the loss of uh, 
something much deeper yeah. having to do with <laughs> the sexual politics of the time. Yeah, her thesis is that like in the era of Me Too, the rules of combat have changed in the sexual battlefield and women no longer tolerate condescending or degrading treatment that was once business or but business as usual in the workplace or dating arena, but in this long overdue pushback against sexual coercion and exploitation has something valuable been lost. Mm -hmm. And then she outlines kind of this history of Hollywood uh, sex symbols um, from Theta Barra down to um, Jean Harlow. Yeah. um, Rita Hayward. Yeah. And then Liz Taylor, Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn Monroe, arguably kind of the, um, becoming the archetypal like sort of exploited blonde yeah victim hollywood person yeah emotionally used and abused Mm -hmm. um i like that paglia always pushes back on this myth that uh monroe was the victim of the patriarchy Mm -hmm. um and then she talks about how um the last great sex symbol performance was given nearly three decades ago by uh, Sharon Stone in Basic Instinct where she flashes her punani beaver yeah (laughs) um can't do stuff like that anymore no well you can but you can like you can record it yourself she (laughs) she she um discusses what led to the demise of the sex symbol and gives like four broad um trends like the the fact that women have entered the workforce in mass which is we're with you Mm-hmm. You, I agree. Yeah, that has uh, led to turf sharing and over familiarity. Intimacy breeds contempt. And, yeah, produces boredom and simmering resentment. Yeah, and the spread of casual oafish hookup culture from college campuses. Um, the loss of mystique. Yeah, the loss of mystique. Um, the rise of Instagram selfies, um, where increasingly young girls strike provocative poses, appropriating star making techniques pioneered by the movie <laughs> industry. And she talks Popping about that pussy. Yeah. <laughs> She Marilyn Monroe invented that. <laughs> she did. Oh yeah, she did it on the great in the Seven Year Itch. <laughs> I mean, I think the scene in Basic Instinct with Sharon Stone in the white dress is obviously a nod to the scene of Marilyn Monroe in the white dress on the great. Sure, but yeah. it's kind of much more cynical and corporate because this is like the the heyday of like Wall Street Gordon Gecko type, right. super watchable, like Michael Douglas. Yeah. Mm this was yeah the heyday of michael douglas um who who got um oral cancer from eating Eating too much pussy (laughs) as he'll have you know she says uh paradoxically despite its relentless skin display virtual reality dematerializes the body and has made it a locus of chronic anxiety body dysmorphia from which singer billy eilish suffered has gone epidemic (laughs) i love that i love that she knows who billy eilish is billy eilish doesn't know who van halen is but camille poglia knows who billy eilish is yeah I wasn't. I have not been abreast of this Billie Eilish Van Halen thing. I don't I've really never give a shit. heard Billie Eilish. <laughs> I barely know who Billie Eilish is. I I realize that, that song has really got her like, finger on the pulse. She does. Yeah, she's like my mom. Um, but I I realize that song that's like do 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 is Billie Eilish. Mm. It sounds like another. The thing with all these pop stars is that they all sound the same. Right. And Billie Eilish, I guarantee you, like she does wear those, like she's like looking like Cedric the Entertainer at a cookout, you know? It's what, like the big, big t shirt. Yeah. The long t. <laughs> well, that's because of her dysmorphia, dude. Yeah, but I think Pogli is onto something. Billie oh, Eilish I mean, is this high, is the same thesis she's been hashing out for, forever, yeah. which is like we've lost touch with like um, the primal paganness and mystique of the eras that are far gone now. <laughs> that hollywood used to be better music used to be better yeah women used to be thought we think that they were disempowered but actually they possessed a kind of mystical aura that you can't that isn't the managerial class looks to like sanitize and expunge yeah. from public life like they derived their power from their aura which was unofficial and behind the scenes yeah and now women have to go to work (laughs) yeah and now that that yeah that men and women are sharing the same open office plan Mm -hmm. there's no more cubicles uh now that we're on the same co-working there's not even an office there's just co-working yeah it's just a co-working space with like a peloton bike planted (laughs) in the middle um they've everybody has kind of lost the excitement of lusting after the opposite sex there's no mystery anymore i mean it's all very like obvious she talks about how um, the 
priorities of womanhood have shifted and that marriage and pregnancy are, are often delayed or avoided by middle class, ambitious middle class working I'm women. trying as hard as I can. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. real hard to get knocked up, I promise. And she, she talks about how the body is becoming mechanized and wed to technology peloton again. I mean, she's not wrong. It's just at this she's point. She's right about everything. Yeah. Of course. Um, the last the la her so that was the third reason why the sex symbol has waned the last fourth reason she gives is that um in in this current climate consumed by politics interest in psychology has waned that's mm. that's mm-hmm. the biggest one that i'm concerned about right because i think people can no longer read psychological types or personality types or kind of the nuances of human interaction mm-hmm. well hence like the trend of these like Aspergian scripts yeah. that people are like to suggest online yeah, to like mediate social interactions because they actually can't understand psychological nuance or social cues. Yeah. Yeah. A, a friend of mine had a good point about this that I'm going to try to find right now. That was like basically to the effect of that, that um, all these Sperg scripts, like mm-hmm. these pre, uh, whatever pre-made templates simulate social relations for like spurgy alienated people who have no concept of social relations right which is true and i think like the the rise of the internet and the decline in the interest in psychology probably go hand in hand sure yeah one of the most interesting things like which i've said before is that there's been a revival of interest in marx and but, not Freud. but not in Freud. Yeah, we've said this. Yeah. yeah, like if you want, if you want to do late nineteenth century theorizing, you'd be. Um, and this is Zizek's big thesis as well, that you'd be like, you're, you're you'd be misle- misleading to uh, avoid Freud. Avoid yeah, Freud. <laughs> avoid Freud. But that's the thing. It's like okay, Marx was a great critic of political economy. He understood material economic relations between human beings Mm -hmm. but what's glaringly missing from his analysis is the psychological component which is not to say that he wasn't aware of it it's just that wasn't his focal interest right he was writing about economics has there really not been a sex symbol since sharon stone and then, well, she sort of, uh, she talks about the success of that film, Hustlers. Right. As which is sort of a callback to, which a stretch maybe. That was kind of a stretch. I, I was like, what, all of this like beautiful word wordplay to boost a J-Lo film from 2019. <laughs> um, but I guess, yeah. Have you kinda, seen Hustlers? No, did you? No. Uh, no. I watched, um. I watched 2001 Space Odyssey on my flight <laughs> again. <laughs> on, again. Uh, <laughs> um, and then I watched Little Miss Sunshine, which I also have seen. Same movie. Same movie. <laughs> oh, and I tried to watch The Hours, actually. Is that the Nicole was, Kidman, Virginia Woolf yeah. thing where they tack on like a nose onto her yeah, tiny yeah. nose? And Julianne Moore uh, and Meryl Streep. Um but it, it was quite tedious. I didn't realize Virginia Woolf, such a drag. Yeah. <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a downer, no? <laughs> um, uh, but Toni Collette has a little cameo on that as well. And I think Toni Collette rocks. I think she should get an Oscar. Honestly. She rules. She's one She's of the last great good. actresses. She's a fucking great actress. Yeah. I really admire her. <laughs> Total aside, not related to it. Paglia's thesis. No, she that. she really is consistently good. I'm trying to think, has there been any great sex symbols since Sharon Stone? Mm, Scarjo is a kind of, you know, mm, yeah. I don't know. For millennial yeah. guys who listen to Chapo, yeah. But there hasn't been, well, there's no films that have like elevated someone to that level of like mystique because yeah. now we associate it with being um, like depersonalized or well, yeah, it's objectified not, or something. It's not that there are no women left who have what it takes. I think that I'm, I'm right here. Hollywood. Are you listening? <laughs> oh my God. I thought you said Emrata. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she sort of is the sex symbol. She of is. Yeah. Our time, which is like a very dysmorphic kind of grotesque kind of sexuality. Yeah. Perfect. And kind of textureless. Grotesque as in like 
grotto as in like cavernous yeah what did you like, call her a body without organs <laughs> <laughs> no but Quite she literally yeah. she's one of the few women i can think of emrata and maybe rihanna who really like command fame on a level that mm-hmm. most women can't but again it's not because there aren't any like hot and sexy women around or like the, who but can't they're have. also not actors i mean i'm um, sort of is but like yeah yeah but that just goes to the point that the mm. whole concept of like fame and of acting mm-hmm. have changed to the point where nobody can command that level of real estate in the industry right and the machinery required to produce a sex symbol just doesn't exist anymore. Right, exactly. Like, you think about women... Like, everything's um, about, like, how many times a woman speaks in a movie Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like... Um, I was thinking about this in reference, actually, because I, I started writing this essay, right, about... Oh. Uh, I, yeah, the therapy's really helping. And I was thinking about how the real star of uncut gems in my mind it's i'm writing an essay about like the softy brothers and oh, is, julia real, fox? is julia fox mm. um because she's this girl who's like a trashy slutty uh impudent street smart mistress of right. this guy right she's a person who we have no trust in who our expectations are low for um in, in keeping with those assumptions that we have about her it's reasonable to expect that she would be the femme fatale who would betray him. But a lot like Adriana La Serva uh-huh. in The Sopranos, she's the one She who, rises to the occasion. Yeah, she's the most morally redeeming, grounded, consistent figure in that entire movie. Right. She never betrays Howard up until that last scene, even when there's like this whole like caper plot. And well, she's set up rather... No spoilers. No spoilers, but she's set up rather ambiguously as possibly the source of the betrayal and that doesn't happen you know yeah right and this is an actress who gets through this film with a minimum of lines which flies in the face of this liberal feminist dogma that in order for an actress to shine she has to be burdened with a ton of speaking right. lines she's gotta give a monologue about how a woman should be president yeah <laughs> she's like now howard i know that i'm cheating on you with your wife sorry that was wrong i'm like really you know that you're I'm, cheating on your wife with me yes but you really have to vote for Kamala Harris <laughs> in the primary because it's important that we have not only a woman, but a woman of color. And she does command a kind of aura for sure. Yeah. Actually, Julia Fox. Does. She's a pog. She is a pog. Camille Pog. <laughs> yeah. But well, yeah, it, I look forward to reading that essay. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But it's but keep, keep going to therapy. Yeah. I might just finish an essay. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right, right. but it's that that's the thing it's like really interesting because there's literally no space and no system in place for there to be sex symbols and i don't know that the culture at large wants sex symbols well yeah that's that's sort of the bigger thing you can extrapolate is yeah yeah i mean they think they do i think we would benefit actually yeah from someone who commanded a kind of sexual mystique i'm ready man i'm <laughs> <laughs> make it happen <laughs> no people would benefit and the demented waif hollywood's been waiting for yeah. <laughs> who tortures men with chaos <laughs> that's that's sexy right yeah but i can think of a lot of women who have kind of a, a level of sexual charisma that was like underused or underexploited in cinema mm. And then you think about all these young actresses and there's dozens of them. Uh, Emma Stone, Emma Watson, Margot Robbie. The charmless Brie Larson. Brie Larson, yeah. Who else? I mean, they're, Emma Roberts are all called Emma somehow. <laughs> uh, Dakota Johnson. Yeah, right. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's talk about the Fifty Shades of Grey franchise. Right? Yeah. What a great opportunity to capitalize on like producing not just a sex symbol, but like sexually viable erotic images yeah. that fall completely flat. Yeah. And part of that is the material, I guess, because Fifty Shades of Grey is about like the contractualization of sex anyway. Yeah, it's literally one of those empathy templates on Twitter in the form of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's shocking and stunning. I mean, what about like somebody like Kristen Stewart in Twilight? 
Mm-hmm. Well, she, she's a teen. She's a teen. She's not meant to be. Like, she's meant to sort of be an every an every girl. Yeah, but films. she's like a, an unformed sex symbol. She's a, almost like what's her name? The the brunette that um, Ryan O'Neill married, Allie, whatever the fuck. Like an all American. Never mind. I'll cut this part. Okay. <laughs> but they're different. But yeah. my point is that like all these actresses, they're like wildly famous and pretty lucrative. But like nobody will remember them in ten years' time. I think Kristen Stewart will have maybe her, but her like career. nobody's gonna remember like Dakota Johnson or Margot Robbie in ten years. Yeah, sure. And they're uh-huh. both like cute and marginally talented, and there's nothing wrong with them. But yeah. they simply just cannot take up space in the way that like star power yeah right but but it's not even that they don't have star power it's just that like there isn't enough like there's too much information and stimulus for them to be like seriously captivating right like you look you know when you were a kid and you saw like hollywood actresses in old movies and you were like god she's so beautiful I'll yeah. never look like that. And then you wake up 20 years later and you're like, wait, actually that chick wasn't that hot. She'd be a size 16 by today's standards. <laughs> but back in the day, that was like the thing because there was no Photoshop and there was no internet and people didn't have immediate like, right. things to compare her to. Right. Hence the dysphoria. Yeah and dysmorphia yeah right that's what i meant dysmorphia (laughs) i think actually it's weird because billy eilish billy idol billy eilish has these kind of like really big cans big cans and deep abject oversexed eyes Ooh, she does she's like could be very sexy yeah even if she wore baggy clothes but she refuses to like claim that reputation probably out of body dysmorphia and who knows you know who knows what else has happened to that girl? Yeah, I mean, she has like some NDA with her brother about all the sex they've been having. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, final thoughts? I don't know. I mean, I think about this all the Podcasters time. Podcasters are the new sex Yeah, symbols. we're the new sex <laughs> completely just dis- completely disembodied just a low female voice <laughs> yeah. telling you to kill yourself <laughs> that's what uh, that's the new sex symbol of 2020 yeah it's like a asmr or something mm-hmm. yeah i don't know i mean like i agree with poglia i always agree with poglia even when she's wrong because even when she's wrong she's kind of right but it's true and consistent and consistent and that's, yeah that's what counts and but i feel like you know after a while like you can't I, i'm s- slowly starting to part with this kind of very boomer stance hmm. that's like morally hierarchical like my era was better than your but things era. used to be better yeah yeah because the times they are a change in like i saw a, bob like dylan rolling stone <laughs> no sure yeah we get the we get the sex icons we deserve yeah and they're simply like art has taken different forms and it's up to us to then decide what we will do with them right well i don't think um poglia is pessimistic necessarily no i think that ultimately her message is one of like um it's prescriptive right she has like um a value system that she would like to see reflected yeah but i think that that's there's possibility there. Yeah. And I don't think like people always often accuse her of arguing that we should go back to a time when, you know, women were in the kitchen and sex right. symbols like ruled the stage. But I don't think that that's what she's asking for. She knows that can't happen. No. Only a fool would say we have to go back to, to the olden days of the patriarchy. Right. Just but that there were, there's been something lost (laughs) yeah yeah but you know like as Nietzsche said God is dead so what are you gonna do about it (laughs) he said a bunch of good stuff he said be blissful and do what you feel like doing yeah vote Bernie vote Bernie vote labor vote labor (laughs) (laughs) keep calm and date me (laughs) see you in hell see you in hell